Hello. I'm so glad you're joining us on night two for the Holy Spirit reboot. I said us. I know. Pastor Kate's not here. She's coming very shortly. But I want to thank you for joining. She's there. Yay. So if your mic is on. If you are not joining through rootbible.com, go there right now. It's a free account. It's a free class. There's nothing to keep you from joining, but you can interact with us and ask questions as we're going to dive into today the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I love how Janelle says, Holly says yes. That was, <laughs> that's awesome. She's going to interpret for her this evening. <laughs> <laughs> By that motion, she means I will consider what you're saying. <laughs> hey, and Skylar's joining the floating us. Head I in love it. The brick room. Welcome. <laughs> oh, is that steak? Oh, man. Oh, he's rubbing it in. Skylar he prepares can cook the steak. best steak. I mean, this steak was even better tonight. Makes it taste he's, I just amazing. finished dinner and now my mouth is watering. Thanks a lot, <laughs> Skylar. Right. Listen, but that's not what we're talking we're about. We're going to leave carnal things aside this <laughs> evening so we can build off of what we talked about last night, which was who is the Holy Spirit? Is he a he or an it? He is a he. And we establish his role in the body of Christ that, that directs us straight back to the head. And through Jesus, we can operate in him, in all power and all ability to accomplish the th same things that Jesus accomplished. And right. what's neat is we're going to divide, d d we're going to really go into the word tonight and see how Jesus operated in, in all of the gifts of the spirit. And we're going to see how it's true the Lord desires now that we do the same. And, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of things to debunk, um, you know, maybe a sacred cow, de yep. you know, not push the cow over. Kill the sacred cow. Kill the sacred cow. Uh, on. So we're going to start with some. We're not doing sacred cow tipping. We're, gonna we're not doing that. What is that? We're going to start with some questions. So, <laughs> yes, it's supposed to be interactive. Hey, welcome, Sharon. Sharon's joining. See you. <laughs> she figured it out. I love <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah. That is awesome. I, I don't know that I could if it weren't oh, for you. You know what? We're not going to be able to hear him. Let me see if I can figure can this hear? out. Let me see. Can you hear? Testing, testing. I guess they're all. <gasps> oh, that's awful. Turn that yeah. off. Okay. All right. I'm here saying we, go. we can't hear them without that. Without the speaker. But now do we sound echoey to you? No. Oh, nice. And we can hear yeah. you. Yeah. All right. If we start sounding echoey, let us know. Um, Because there's another system for us to figure out. And we are figuring it out. <laughs> but there are definitely learning little. curves. Okay. So we're going to start off with a question tonight. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you... Okay, this is a question for everyone to nod yes, type yes, answer yes. Uh, do you believe that the gifts of the Spirit are optional? Like, you know, take them or leave them. They're gifts, so. Some have them, some don't. Right. It's kind of a, its what own you entity. Think? Type your answer if you, if you think they're optional. Or nod your head or shake your well, head. Well, I kind of or... covered them up there. I'm trying to get, for those of you on social media, I'm telling you, last night we had a ton of chatting. contact. It was all chatty on social media, and we saw zero of it. So get on rootbible.com. Oh, there it looks like I'm sniffing your shoulder. That's good. <laughs> all right. Okay, so what, What? Uh, no, however, isn't going to force you to utilize them. Okay, I like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, mm -hmm. they are gifts. And, the, you know, you can... You can associate that with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the same, right? Like he's not going to force you to utilize him either. Right. He won't force you to surrender to him. Agreed. So um, how about this? Do you believe that water baptism is optional? Do you no, believe no. that water baptism? Yeah, you'd say no, right? I would I would say no. Mm -hmm. I'd say it's pretty, pretty specific in the word that it is required for salvation. One of the steps, right? All right. How about um, communion? Is communion optional? No, no. I love Sharon's answering right up. She's like, no, no. Holly's okay. like, no and no. Okay. But here's what's interesting. You ready for this? Is there are 27 New Testament verses on water baptism, 27. Mm -hmm. And yet um, we would defend 
our faith in God around water baptism, wouldn't you? If someone's like, oh, I don't need to be water baptized. You'd be like, yes, you do. Right. We would be like, mm -hmm. that is not compromisable. Um, how many verses do you think there are for communion in the New Testament? I would guess a lot. I would too. Because, because it's it's such a staple to our Christianity. Right. And so is water I would, baptism. Right. I would, I would guess a lot. Yeah. It's 28. 28. 28 verses. That's a lot less than communion. I was guessing. Yes. Uh, Holly said 54. Janelle said 20. 20. Okay. So, so you know, <clears throat> coming in right in between. Uh, 28 verses in the New Testament mm -hmm. and not one verse on either baptism or communion tell us how, tells us how oh, you're jumping to jump ahead of yourself. I'm really not. Okay. Tells us not how not how to conduct those. Like, okay, so you're going to do communion and this is exactly how you're going to do it. Or you're going to do water baptism and this is exactly how you're going to do it. So how many verses um, you said water mm -hmm. baptism? Mm -hmm. What about communion? You jumped into saying neither of them talk about how to conduct it. But how many verses about communion? I said 28. How many verses about water baptism? 27. You only said one of them. Did I only I'm not say sure. one? Tell me I'm not sure which one you said now because now I? I'm getting confused. I said but, both, right? You said both. Yeah. <laughs> oh, never mind. Never mind. He's doing technical stuff. Okay. So, so of those verses, none of them say, and here's how you'll do them, which, you know, would have been helpful. Don't get me wrong. I, I would ask the father uh, when I can. Uh, about that, but he doesn't. So in 27 verses about baptism and in 28 about communion, he doesn't say specifically how to conduct them. He just says to do them. And then we see examples of people doing them, but none are necessarily doing them the same or in a certain formula. So we draw from the Holy Spirit how to do those things. And yet we would defend everything that we know about Christianity on those two things. Now, let's see, how about verses about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. How many do you think specifically about the gifts of the Holy Spirit uh, do you think there is in the New Testament? See, I can only think of off the top of my head, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Uh, obviously, before we studied this out, I would have said those two <laughs> chapters are about gifts of the Spirit. And so, yeah, probably, probably about the same would be my guess. 10, Maybe a little less 20. because if communion and water baptism have 27, 28, then I would guess a little less on the Holy Spirit because that seems not to be optional, but it's something that most people are like, well, sometimes you can somehow operate in them as the Spirit wills, but he really doesn't will it very often. And so, so it's mo almost miraculous when you get to walk in the Spirit. gifts of the Spirit. And in fact, whole denominations than, have been built around not operating in them other than speaking in tongues because i've always gone to a church where speaking in tongues was a staple like that was accepted but that one and interpretation of tongues was accepted because you've got it <laughs> otherwise somebody just standing up in the middle of church and rattling on and everyone's like great awesome the first but, time i visited a church uh, a, a church that wasn't a catholic church um i was a teenager and my mom i called her the church lady because i wasn't yet walking with the Lord. And I went into a congregation and I think it, what was Lake Michigan, it was, um, assemblies of God. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sitting there in the back with her and some lady gets up in the middle of service and is like, blah, 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 blah. I mean, like, and like <laughs> the feeling was not good. You know what I mean? It was like, Oh, and, and I was like, I, I'm not coming back here. You, you guys are crazy. You know, they all wore moo moos. That's what I called like dresses that had no, and, and, you know, they wore their hair a certain they had way, no shape. very religious, very, you know, but I, I just one experience there. And then whatever that was, I was like, Nope, never again, not coming back. And so yeah. a lot of people have even built denominations around not having it in order to reach the lost. Right. Like, so they've taken those experiences. I would maybe outside of God, take that experience and go, oh, you know, we're not going to do that in our congregation because we want to reach people. Or because there aren't any verses in the Bible telling us how these are supposed to be in operation within the church, that it just opens the door to too much weirdness and things like that. But and so we're are. going to shut that down. But there actually are verses yeah, so I say, showing us yeah. how to do this. Someone said 10, church. how many verses? So not only are these verses on the spirit, on the Holy Spirit and his gifts, mainly Specifically his gifts. gifts, not just Holy Spirit. <clears throat> right. This yeah. is 
in gifts of operation and detailed instruction on how they are supposed to operate. There are 108 verses. <laughs> That's not even close. Nope, not even a close tie. And yet we have church splits over water baptism. We have church splits on how you do communion. We have different denominations who baptize one way and don't baptize another. And then we have denominations that either say the gifts of the spirit are for today, but we limit them. You have denominations that say they are not for today and they uh, don't even acknowledge them. And then you have those that like, oh, if it shows up, right? We're gonna, mm. we're open to it if if those gifts show up okay so let's all right let's look at what those 108 okay. verses I'm gonna have are to move i'm gonna put over. them up so if you're taking notes go ahead and write them down because there we go an hour goes fast uh patrick is probably gonna be like rolling her eyes right now no. are you kidding me you have, you're snuggling with me and you have a corny <laughs> flame background <laughs> that's, yes that's, that, nice. that, that's exactly right I, uh, I like my corny flame background <laughs> and uh, see, Kenzie likes it too. Thanks, Kenzie. I appreciate that courtesy laugh. Oh, <laughs> come on. Oh, okay, write those down. Write Holy them down. Holy Spirit gifts. All of our graphics are flame. And so it just makes sense to have a moving flame. And if you don't write this down, if you don't have a notebook or something like that, you can go back to the replay on YouTube. We'll upload them to the website eventually when we have time. <laughs> and um, you'll be able to pause it, write these down yep. and study them out because you cannot, you cannot walk into the fullness of the understanding of the gifts of the spirit just from this class alone. But we're thankful to set that reboot button and allow you to start to think through the scriptures on what God is really saying when he uses 108 verses of the New Testament, which isn't nearly as large as the Old Testament, but 108 verses to utilize both speaking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit and then how to walk or operate in them. All right. So now. I'm going to challenge you with what I challenged you before, because I bet some people looking at this list who are fairly familiar with what the Bible, <laughs> they're seeing first Corinthians chapter 13 verses one through 13 on there. And they're like, hang on, that's don't, the marriage chapter. Don't go there yet. Don't do you it. You don't want to do it. All right. He, all that right. was the first one that when we were studying See, out, he's like, when no. I saw this list, I was like, nope, that we're going to have to make. We have to make adjustments because we cannot include that one. Uh, some We let somebody else do the research for us on this instead of just uh, hunting them down ourselves. And so they put that one in there. And well, I guess we, we'll tell you eventually why that one is in there. And we added two others. Correct. Because yes. um, they weren't in there. So that's so why you've weird. got to study to show yourself approved. It's okay to utilize this class. It's okay to listen to other speakers on it. But when you go to the word, you've got to let the Holy Spirit lead you into truth. And so we were able to even find more verses that were specifically about the gifts of the mm -hmm. spirit that weren't mentioned in some other studies that we were taking and books that we were reading. My mind is blown. <laughs> yes. All right. I'm is. sitting upright for those of you that... Uh, wanted to know for sure. It's Second Peter chapter four verses ten through eleven. Okay, I couldn't so now, move over far enough to get there. That's four times more verses than about communion. That's four times more verses than about water baptism, and yet people would say in the church today that they know very little about the operations and the gifts of the Spirit. Wouldn't you say? I'd mm -hmm. say today, for the most part, that is not necessarily something the church is is wise about or or educated in. This is not to judge, but this is to question why. Why, if God thought it was so important to take 108 verses, do we not acknowledge more the gifts of the Holy Spirit that come with he who is the Holy Spirit? And so mm -hmm. that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. So. We don't want to be duped into thinking, oh, the gifts of the Spirit are passed away. We don't want to be duped into thinking the gifts of the Spirit are only for the elite or the mm -hmm. five-fold ministry or the gifts of the Spirit are only for those that are super spiritually in tune. That's not me. You see, that's not a gift. In fact, we're going to find out that this gift is for the entire body of Christ mm -hmm. and is limited by nothing. <clears throat> When you surrender yourself to the Holy Spirit, who is the man, the Holy Spirit. Just like salvation is for everybody. Mm -hmm. Just like water baptism is for everybody. 
just like communion is for everybody. We can't cut something out that has four times the verses about it um, for ourselves. Yeah, you know, those three, I agree, but the uh, that gifts of the Spirit, I'm just not sure how that would work, and so I'm not going to press into this. I, I Sometime when I'm more spiritually mature, I might desire to dive into those things. <laughs> yeah. But but right now, I just got to work on whatever it is. Right. And I, that's, it's backwards. Yeah. But, that's, but that's where people get stuck. The, mm -hmm. And I believe that's just the enemy twisting truth. That's one of our pet peeves is that um, twisted truth is worse than a lie. And so if he can twist the truth, like, oh, no, there's still spiritual gifts, but it's only for certain people. You know, I even want to debunk this. One of my favorite teachers, and I won't say his name right now for a particular reason, says that the Corinthian church is the most carnal. I agree on that part. But he says that the, the gifts of the spirit were revealed to the most carnal church because they needed them. And they needed them because they were carnal. I do not agree with that. Now, when you study the church at Corinth and what was Corinth. Corinth and what was happening at that time, what was really going on in that city and what they were dealing with and what they had to understand was no longer them. Yes, it was an incredibly carnal church, but he was showing no, the power. I would I would go as far as to say it's an incredibly carnal culture within church. that city. Right. Not within the church because the church was coming out of that, and right. he was bringing some how? some uh, instruction on, on how, how to, to do, do that, that, how to live separate from your culture. Uh, but I would I wouldn't say that they were the most carnal church. Be I would you know, my reasoning is because you is go it to he, the church that he said you are still on milk. No, that was Ephesus. Who was the church that was still on milk? Oh, it might be Corinth. That's what I thought. Yeah. So All that's right. No, why you I, might be getting Yeah, it. but I think that's why also they needed to understand the gifts of the Spirit. So he utilized this time to go, listen, all of that old identification with your carnal self is passed away. And the Holy Spirit, the man of the Holy Spirit is here to, to speak through you what we're about to go into, the gifts of the Spirit, so that they could take in understanding that they could not possibly naturally because what was going on around them. And maybe someday we'll do a class on what was going on in that city, but it was gross. It would basically be, we were talking about it today. It would be what America is, is getting choked with today. Um, as far as I am what I am, I'm either this or I'm that I'm confused. I'm a, that was Corinth. That well, was, yeah. that was that day because it was a stopping point for sailors. It was basically the Island that got shut down, um, it was that they, uh, they identified was, as sexual beings, not a certain um, sex, not a certain race. They, it was like a place you went for a sexual vacation. Like it was extremely carnal. And so here, when these people got saved, it was like, well, can't we still keep living that way? They didn't know any better. And so without the, the moving of the Holy Spirit to bring what they didn't yet understand, how would they come into that knowledge? How would they know to lay those things down? Where would they draw the strength to not be carnal beings any longer and to walk out their new life? Well, they couldn't, especially in that atmosphere on a constant basis. And so we were even talking today, it's more important than ever that especially Americans, I'm not confident on what's happening in the rest of the world, but the land where we are has gone a little wacky and so much wacky that it, that the gifts of the spirit are needed more than ever in the body of Christ it, within the church so that when people get saved, they can access the man of the Holy Spirit and those gifts that have been given. That's going to bring what we're going to talk about tonight in just a mm -hmm. moment. That's going to bring those things needed when needed straight from heaven supernaturally. Okay. All right. You got anything to add to that? It's good. <laughs> it's good. Wow. <laughs> Thanks for that addition. Okay. Embrace spiritual gifts. Do you want to go there? Yeah, let's do it. I like that. Okay. So 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4, right? Yep. All right. If you're going there with us, are you turning there for me or would you like me I'm, to turn I'm pulling there? up on my phone because I left my Bible outside of the bed and I can't get to it. Okay, so. so this is Paul starting off his letter to them. And he wants them to know some things. First of all, that their carnal nature is going to get them nothing, right? But that the grace of God is going to get them everything. Do you, you want to read it? Yep. For, what, you tell me when to stop. 
Okay. Because I know it's verse 9, but I'm sure you have something to say before that. <laughs> I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God, which was given you in Christ Jesus. That Wait. In... Grace. What's the Greek word there? I, my... Charis. It is. Okay. Grace. So how many of you think the word grace is kind of thrown around without an understanding of what it means today? In the church, sure, you know, by grace, I have been saved. Well, what does that mean? And when he's writing right there, what does he say? I think my God always concerning you for the grace of God, which was given to you in Christ Jesus. Well, Christ died for me. So that grace that's been given to me, I better understand what that is. Right? I better understand what the grace of God, so Christ died so I could have is. So the word there, the Greek word is charis, and that is empowering a supernatural trust uh, or touch that is never silent or invisible. I Come think that's on. interesting because I when too. I look at grace or think about grace before we started this out, I thought of grace as uh, invisible intangibility. Right. Grace is like, something like, know, okay, like, you got grace. Woo, yeah. What does that mean? I don't know. means that I'm not going to hell. And so I'm happy for that grace. And that's as far as it went. But here... The definition is something that's never silent or invisible. That messes with my worldly definition of grace, my my carnal definition right. of grace. The filter, the carnal filter or the fleshly filter that we've run grace through. As we read all of the accounts of grace appearing in the word of God, it is 90% of the time the word charis, that Greek word that means never silent or invisible. That's the grace of of God. So he's starting off his letter to these sinners that have been saved by grace with telling them it is God's grace, which has been given to them in Christ Jesus, that he's coming to them. So he's already clearing their slate, right? He's already saying, hey, don't worry. I know what's going on, but it's in God's grace that I'm able to come to you and write this letter because his grace is that tangible and that awesome and that seen that understood. Isn't that cool? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to start with four and then I'll go through five this time. I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God, which was given you in Christ Jesus, that in everything you were enriched in him. <laughs> Here we go. Enriched. That word also is um, rich. So like the same word used in the scripture, I think it's in Ephesians where God is rich in mercy. Okay, you also think about um, grace and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. Okay, you start to recognize these scriptures for what he's really saying. Well, enriched there, I'm not even going to try to say the Greek word. Um, you can Plusius. try. Yes. Oh, you're so good. Okay, so wealthy, they cannot tabulate how much wealth they have. I know it because I changed my middle name to that. <laughs> oh, that's right. When we were studying this out, he's like, from now on, that's my middle name. Joshua Placius Richter. Yes. Lucius. <laughs> Lucius. Okay. <laughs> but because the, the definition is so wealthy. Now, of course, when he's talking about being enriched here, he's not talking about just finances. He's not talking right. about money will pass away. Well, right? then it goes on. You are enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge so it specifically says right there that as an overwhelmingly unmeasurable abundance is available to you as you open your mouth yeah and as you think on him think focus on heavenly things you don't just have a little bit of wisdom a little bit of ability to unpack the scriptures to know god's purposes and plans for your life to know how he wants to work through you to guide others we're talking about an unmeasurable uh unable un to be tabulated like right you can't even put a natural number on the amount of wealth or overflowing tip abundance top Oh, how many times do we read that in the word, right? Just constant flow, overflowing, beyond imagination. Well, this is the word enriched and it's beyond tabulation, meaning you can't put a number on it. It's that much. Well, what is that much? What is it? It's in, let's see, you're enriched in. You're enriched in him, in all speech and all, and all knowledge, even as the testimony concerning Christ was confirmed, confirmed. in you. Yep. So that nope, go okay. ahead. So that you are not lacking in any gift, awaiting eagerly the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. What are you not lacking in? 
what are you not lacking in? He's just any about to go in gift. any gift. It's not, I mean, I mean, it's optional if you're looking at it as, oh, I'll get, you know, I'll take it, I'll leave it. But it's not optional in he'll give it, he won't give it. Mm -hmm. It's available, it's not available for some to, and not others. I, I've heard from a bunch of places that you have to wait and it's as the spirit mm -hmm. wills and the spirit doesn't will very often. And so you're just hoping that eventually at some point you'd be able to experience the spirit willing to use, use one of the spirit spiritual gifts in your life. But that goes against what the word says. It goes against being enriched. That you're not lacking in any gift, that you are enriched through his grace with plusius. Yeah. Rich in knowledge, mm -hmm. meaning overflowing to un be not able to be tabulated. Mm -hmm. Rich in gift, gifts, spiritual which, gifts. Percent, which I think is really fun because rich in knowledge, three of the spiritual gifts that we talk about are knowledge gifts yeah and then it says rich in speech three of the gifts are gifts that say, say something. something so there's three that know something and there's three that say something and then three that do something mm -hmm. and so it, it all it already points out two-thirds of the spiritual gift list that we are most familiar with and then there's a whole lot more than those. So and we're, we're <laughs> all right. We're gonna to pause. Does anyone have any questions? Since we're are fire we over, hosing you, we are going fast. Are we overwhelming you? We are trying to fit as much of this rich information in this one hour as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. For those of you joining on, well, I gotta pause for a sec. Anyone joining on social media? Um, social media is not wanting to get this message out. And so, <laughs> That's the truth. so it has seriously limited the video. So if you are watching and you can't really hear it and you can't really see, but you're staying with us to try and figure out more about the spiritual gifts, go to rootbible.com right now. Join. Everything sounds clear. It looks crisp. So if you, if you want to get away from this attack on the truth getting out, uh, what was the, well, I would get into politics, but one of the things that the world economic system, I'll say it that way, um, doesn't want is uh, spiritual is, gifts and speaking in right, tongues, spiritual gifts. And they have to, they want to eliminate that. And so it's no wonder to me that as we teach on this, that we're, we're being look blocked. At this, we're streaming at three frames per <laughs> second. With a 24 second interval. Because we're going to have to get oh, the recording my out word. there. So, That's yeah. All right. We go live all the time and it just is blocking this one. So, listen, come to rootbible.com, log in, join Holy Spirit. It's free. And then mm -hmm. uh, you'll be able to interact with us. All right, Dave now, and Jacqueline questions. said, um, I learned that grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and, grace. And I, I like that because if you think of it as God's unlimited wealth and ability yeah. for you to do everything he's designed for you is now fully available to you because of what Christ the blood did of Christ. then yes but but um i don't i get stuck with some of those catchphrases because it limits my understanding of that because I'm like oh your grace is da -da -da -da, and i don't dive into the depth that god wants me to understand because of those. Well, and a lot of that happens with words from the word anyway, like grace, like mm -hmm. hallelujah, like mercy. You know, we'll say these things, but um, we're working into, and we're actually going to talk about that word tonight. We're working into, we're building into an understanding that comes complete in Christ through the leading of the Holy Spirit. So that grace is never silent or invisible. It is, is always so available and can be seen. Okay. So that grace of God qualifies you. Grace is something you can see. So it's not just I'm qualified internally. It's not just I'm qualified uh, when I'm at church. It's not just I'm qualified when I have goosebumps. We talked about that last night, right? It's qualified now for every good work. That grace can be seen in every part of your life. That's the kindness of God that leads others to repentance because they see that power. That is he who is the Holy Spirit living in you and through you. And it's unlimited, he says that you can't even tabulate the richness of that grace and the knowledge and the gifts that are part of you. How cool is that? Okay. So what are those gifts? Well, first it says utterance. Okay. Utterance 
is logos or the vocal gifts. We're going to talk about the nine that most people recognize first. Okay, then you'll often hear the nine gifts of the spirit and we teach on this, but they're not to be limited to just these nine. And we'll explain why in a little bit. So first we'll talk about there are three different kinds, the vocal gifts or the gifts of utterance, which utterance in um, did your version say utterance. Sorry. Nope. You are lacking in, any in gift. Are we good evening? Oh, speech instead of utterance. Mm -hmm. Well, it normally in the King James Version, it says utterance, and that just means logos. Which, which is interesting. Logos is the word for the word. Mm -hmm. Yep, or spoken word, mm -hmm. right? So so what is uttered, which is why they're called vocal gifts or utter, gifts of utterance. So In the beginning was the word. That's logos. Mm -hmm. So there is prophecy. There is tongues. And there's interpretation of tongues. Now, know this, that these are the gifts of those things. Okay. He desires everyone prophesying, yet not everyone is a prophet. He desires everyone speaks in tongues, but there isn't always an operation of the gift of tongues. Just because you're speaking in tongues. Interpretation of tongues. When you're in public and you speak in tongues or diverse tongues, then there is an interpretation, not a translation. Okay, it's not always going to be word for word. It's an interpretation. Pause and for a second. That's another one of the vocal gifts. For those of you that are curious, we're, we're going to go into more depth about each one of yep. these. We're just giving you an overview of the nine that we're going to talk about. And then I'm going to talk about uh, other gifts of the spirit that are less talked about. Well, I'm still second. pulling, just so you're familiar, I'm still pulling from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 4 through 9, because he said we'll be empowered to you can see it and we will be overflowing with the gifts of utterance and knowledge. So it's important. We know those three right up front. We just named the three that are the utterance or the vocal. And he says the knowledge gifts, which are also um, known as revelation gifts of revelation. So knowledge or revelation. So we've got the word of knowledge of which you have access to, to overflowing. You have the word of wisdom which you have access to, to overflowing and the discerning of spirits. This is one that has been a big desire of mine for a long, long time. And I do operate in it more and more every day. And you know what? It's about surrendering more and more. It's about not just going through a moment and, and applying religious tradition. It's about checking in with the Holy Spirit and letting him lead you and guide you in that. And his gift is able to be released through you when you surrender to him. So those are the knowledge gifts. Did I ever let you guys actually answer, nope. ask a question? No. Nope. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions so far? Raise your hand, type them in the messenger. Um, Cause I do know we're going fast. Again, if, if, you're if on we social said a media, verse and you missed it, you can go ahead and reach out. On social media, we may not see your comment. So join us on rootbible.com and we will definitely see that comment. Or a question. Janelle, I see that hand. What was the other knowledge gift? Discerning of spirits, word of knowledge, and... Word of wisdom. Word of wisdom. Okay, thank yep. you. Yes, yep. and leave room in your notes because we'll go into each of those. But those particular here in 1 Corinthians 1, 4, I'm making sure I'm not missing any other hands, 1, 4 through 9, these are the ones that he starts off saying, You're, you already have the grace and the, the en enriched ability to operate in these to beyond what you can tabulate, right? What, what you can imagine. So he's saying like to the most, let's, let's just go back to what is referred to as the most carnal church because it's the most carnal of where they're living. Uh, he goes right in and says, don't you know that you have the grace of God and it's seen all over you and that you have so much access to these things, the vocal gifts and the gifts of knowledge that it's, unable to be tabulated. He just goes in with guns blazing, you know, and if you just read that scripture, it's like, da, 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 da. But when you really dissect it, you're like, holy cannoli. Here are these people that need to know what God sees in them, that need to know through the Holy Spirit, the operating of the gifts so they can hear what the word of God is saying to them, not what they're feeling, not what they're thinking, not when they're immersed in, in that carnal city, but rather an operating of the gifts on a constant basis mm -hmm. that keeps them stirred up, Paul says, stirring up those gifts. Well, that's what he goes in. He starts first Corinthians off guns blazing. I just love it. Mm -hmm. You have anything to add to that? Uh, 
No, it's good. Um, I want to get into the definition. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> we're already 40 minutes I into know. it, so we have to know, pick up the pace. Okay. And I'm trying to tech solve issues here at the same time. Okay, so, but even that, uh, you know, later in 1 Corinthians 14, I just want you to tell you this. They were so overflowing with these gifts that he had to go to 1 Corinthians 14 and spend 40 verses on how to manage these spiritual gifts. They were operating in them at such an alarming rate that they had that Paul had to write to them about how to manage those gifts in 40 verses of our New Testament. It's kind of a big deal, don't you think? And it's not something to be skipped over. It's something to study out and understand and be operating in because we can. All right. So you want to get into the definition. I do. All I right. do. So we're going to go to 1 Corinthians 12, correct? Yep. So if you want to join us in 1 Corinthians 12, this is where the, the nine that most people refer to are found. And it starts in verse 7, or are you starting sooner? Um, yeah, let's turn verse 7. Verse 4 through 6 are all about that even though there's a variety of, of gifts and a variety of effects, it's all from the one Lord and right. one God, and it's all for the one body of Christ. So if you're in the body of Christ, you are in this unity with him that goes beyond our natural understanding. And so it will, shouldn't seem weird or awkward that we're operating in gifts of the spirit right. when everything we do should be unified with God. And so, in fact, in seven, it mm -hmm. says every man, and it's another Greek word that I can't pronounce, but it's hekestos or hekestos, which just literally means every existing man. So it's like you can't confuse this to think I'm eliminated. I don't, I don't operate in these. No, mm -hmm. he's, he's like, and for those, it's of you not rarely given. Is the manifestation of God's grace, which we just saw, so it's clearly seen, it's not hidden, in these gifts given to every man. And he even says, just in case you're wondering, is to profit all. So this gift from heaven is not to tear down. This is where you hear the word edify and encourage often when associated with the gifts, because God repeatedly shows that this is not only for every man, but this is to profit every man, because this is something directly from heaven. These are gifts that the Holy Spirit works through us that bring knowledge, that bring wisdom that we could not carnally have without the man of the Holy Spirit manifesting the gifts of the Spirit through us. And that's mm -hmm. powerful. Mm -hmm. Now I got to pause because some of you may have a watered down version of the Bible that says <laughs> everyone, every person, every entity, every living being, something weird like that. And so the actual translation is every man. man. But when it's saying that, it's referring to mankind. Kind. And so for those of you ladies out there, you can read man and know that's you, just like I can read Bride of Christ and know that's me. <laughs> I don't have identity issues because I read Bride of Christ. He doesn't need to uh, change it me. like when he reads it. Right. I, I understand that. I can be that whatever. And so <laughs> I just want to clarify that because I know some people may get confused by that and they're like, okay, these are spiritual gifts for men. And it's for mankind. And if your Bible says every one, um, it's a, yeah, we'll just, we're not going Find there. a new Bible, we'll he would suggest. Okay. Verse eight. So verse eight, for to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit. Remember, this aren't by our own abilities we're going to be walking in. I know a lot of people don't think that, but I've heard some churches start to teach that. Right. If you are have wisdom in business, then that's the spirit of wisdom, uh, the supernatural gift of wisdom that you're operating in. It's natural gift that that God gave you at birth, and that's not what it's talking about at all. Because then it would you wouldn't need the spirit for it. And so these are gifts of the spirit. When you are living united with Him, then these things are evident. It's not a natural gift given to you at. So anyway. Right. And how do you grow in anything in the spirit? Surrender. You surrender your carnal thinking. You surrender your fleshly answers. You surrender your lordship of your life 
on a daily constant basis because people are like how do i do it how do i grow in these things how do i move in them how do I? and that's good you want to earnestly desire but it's just like anything else in the kingdom of of god it is surrendering the fleshly carnal earthly way or sense realm and going i trust you god is that you yes that's mm -hmm. you then i'm going to speak that then i'm going to do that then i'm going to think that then i'm going to say that then i'm going to you know so you, it's just over and over and over again until it is more more natural for you to be led and moved by the spirit and by the gifts of the spirit than it is to carnally reason answers or solutions. And that's, I, you know, a lot of people are like, well, can't there be a better answer than that? That's the answer to the <laughs> entire life of Christ. Be in the word, surrender to his way of doing things. And it 90% of the time won't make natural sense at all. And you constantly surrender to it. And then you see the fruit. And then you see the answer mm -hmm. and then you see a deliverance and then you see the freedom and then you see that word of wisdom change something. You see that word of knowledge affect something. And right. then all of a sudden mm. you understand, oh, it's just simply a constant leaning of my full entire trust on God and not my own thinking. So I'm going you know, to dive into verse eight talks about word of wisdom and word of knowledge. And even though I don't normally go by the human division of the Bible like that, um, they tie together so well. I want to hit them both. So word of wisdom and word of knowledge, the word word for both there is logos. It's not rhema, the which word. some of you would word guess. Word of, the word uh, is logos. Yeah. Rhema is the revelatory understanding of God. Uh, logos is the written word of God. So you're like, wait a second. Or spoken. What is, or spoken, spoken word of God. And so you're like, wait a second. What, what, how is this? And it's not a revelation that you can walk yourself into. It's not a revelation that you can get by studying the Bible enough or doing, you know, those kinds of things. And that's so a that's different why wisdom. That's not the different... gift of the word of wisdom. And so this is the Holy Spirit speaking to you a level of understanding that you didn't have before. So word of knowledge would be um, fragments almost of facts and details not naturally known uh to the person so so for example of that uh this morning during prayer mm -hmm. uh we, for those of you who don't know every tuesday morning at 10 30 uh almost said central 10 30 <laughs> eastern we do kenzie's like yes, yes, yes. Um, 10 30 <laughs> eastern uh we do prayer and so we were wrapping up our prayer time and all of a sudden i had this fragment of facts that i couldn't really uh I didn't have a full understanding of it, but I knew that there was someone out there that was had so many questions that they didn't feel comfortable putting them all in the chat feed. And so they were participating and praying and they wanted us to pray for them, but they couldn't put it all in there. And so I had an awareness of that, but I didn't know all the details. I didn't know, oh, this is so-and-so on such and such street and they have these questions. Da -da -da -da. Can you get that in word of wisdom? Yes. Or sorry, word of knowledge. Yes, you can know the facts about what's going on, what you're struggling, what someone's struggling with, whatever. That is word of knowledge. Uh, for I'll give you another example. Our spiritual father, um, Hagen, brother Hagen, he had a person come to them and him and say, "Hey, you know what? It's it's prayer meeting time, and if you could pray with me, I'd really like to see my daughter again." She ran away from home. We don't know where she is. We haven't heard from her in months. And uh, I just feel like we need to pray for her and just something something needs to be done tonight. And so he was praying and he got the word of knowledge. Oh, she's living in an upstairs apartment of a white garage. The stairs go up on the backside and wooden stairs up to a second story. And that's where she lives. And she's, it's in such and such town which was about 15, 20 minutes up from where they were. And so they jumped in the car and they drove to that town and he had his fragments. So they were driving up and down the streets looking for the picture of what he had seen in his, in his mind. Because remember, it does have to go through our filter. Right. We're we're reasoning and, and that doesn't mean we should, but we're making sense of you can liken that to like revelation. John writing what he was seeing given to him by the Holy Spirit, writing the best that he understood it. Right. Mm -hmm. That is like that. The same thing is um, a word of knowledge. You can consider Jesus at the well, the woman yeah. at the well. 
Okay. He knew things about her that he would have no natural reason to know. He was a fully man, right? Also, but he had the gift of knowledge working by the Holy Spirit at that moment that he could tell her what was going on, who she was married to, who she wasn't married to. Right. So but, wait to finish my story before you go. Oh, on. sorry. Finish the story real fast. He, they drove down the street, saw the white garage. Brother Hagen was like, that, that's it. That's it. So Brother Hagen and the mom went up the stairs, knocked on the door. The girl opened and she started bawling. She's like, I've wanted to come home. I just didn't know how to say it. And I was praying. Blah, blah, blah. And so God sent them there right as that girl was praying. And they had an understanding that, yep, now is when we need to go. But they didn't know all the details of turn right, turn left. It's such and such address. They just had a fragmented picture. So what is word of wisdom then? Because that sounds like the same thing, but it's really not. Wisdom would be um, special insight into the future. Hey, I really see God is going to do X, Y, Z in your life. That's a word of wisdom. It's not of knowledge of things that are really going on right now or of someone's past. It's a it's a word about the future or setting setting um not setting destiny, setting direction for a person, delivering an answer about someone's praying for the future. Hey, what am I supposed to be doing? It'd be delivering, hey, this is where you're supposed to be at. This is what you're supposed to be doing. This is and so, does that make sense? A word of wisdom usually comes without details. So it's not going to be like, I saw you earlier in the green car when you were driving with Sam down the street. That's a word of knowledge. Mm -hmm. A word of knowledge often comes with details. Doesn't mean it's all there. It's fragments of details, but details that you could not possibly naturally know. Wisdom is giving a projection into the future. You can liken it to Paul on the ship and God, you know, uh, spoke to him and said, you're not going to perish. Okay, well, he didn't mm -hmm. tell him how he's not going to perish. He didn't tell him what he needed to do other than throw. He, well, actually, God didn't tell him. He went and <laughs> no. told them to throw stuff over. We're not going to perish, right? He was filling in. Wait, I got a word of wisdom from the Lord. So now what can I naturally do to walk to out this word of wisdom in faith? Okay. Or another example is the Old Testament. You're like, what? Holy Spirit gifts in the Old Testament? Yep. You can see that the Spirit rested on different individuals all through the Old Testament. We, we talked about that in yesterday that he you could see that he rested on Saul and you can see that he was he was came off of Saul and he rested on David and so Joseph he goes he gets pulled before Pharaoh and Pharaoh tells him this crazy couple of dreams and and what does Joseph say that this can only be known by the spirit of God and so then he do, he says these are, this is what your dream is and he details what it what it is and what it meant and then he goes into from that word of knowledge into a word of wisdom so here's what you need to do because of this knowledge of what these dreams meant here's what you need to do duh, 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 duh. and it was so right on that pharaoh's like okay i need you to head up this whole project because it is known that you know, this is right. This is gone. You have the ability to do that. Same thing with Daniel, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were known as ones that knew the spirit of God. Yeah. And had that supernatural ability to interpret dreams to to do those kind of things. So anyway, yep. I, I could get off for a very long time. No, it's very things. good. Okay. So any questions on word of wisdom or word of knowledge? Knowledge is knowing something that you could not naturally know, oh, usually in right detail. And okay, was that so? So, uh, can a non Christian operate in a word of wisdom? I would say no, because the Holy Spirit is always the infilling of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit always follows salvation. Now, I can say spiritual that realm. the spiritual realm is real. And so, there's people with like crystal balls that are um, connected to the spiritual realm. And spirits can look at knowledge. They could give you they knowledge. Can, they could so they could give you names of, of loved ones. They could give you mm -hmm. where you lived before, right? Because that that that's no mystery. That's nothing hidden. These are those are just things that they can pull from the spiritual realm. And that's real. Witchcraft is real, which is why God says to stay far from it. And they might be able to even tell you um the devil's plan for your life. 
or even because they've been around studying humans for thousands of years, they spirits can, have. Spirits have. They can look at the trajectory of the choices that you're making and make a fairly educated guess of if you keep going down this path, you're going to end up da 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 da. Does that make sense? So it's not a word of wisdom. It's just that they're trying to trick you into believing that they have the spiritual knowledge and wisdom. And so you keep coming back to them instead of looking for it in God. Did that make it clear or make it even more muddied for you? Yeah. Let us know if that answered your question. Online, they say it, the video is fine, but there's no sound. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm getting texts and messages. They're like, hey, we're trying to watch. That's okay. I just thought I'd tell you. We can keep going. I just want you to know. No, thanks for telling me. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah. Look at this. It's up. Just no sound. And nothing's here. Oh, there you go. Tell me if that changes. Okay. I'm not hitting anything. It's just things are behaving interesting okay did that answer your question she hasn't let us know or he we're not sure if we're talking to dave and jacqueline or i wasn't a christian but, right and yeah. so that's partnering with an evil spirit yeah. that has the ability to say um most this likely is the devil's this is plan going to for the future or they'll even be able to say this is what um revelation says is going to happen and then those things happen and then it's like oh wow that spirit was right on. That person who wasn't saved knew the future just like God does. Maybe they're just as powerful as God is, but it's not that way at all. They know the plans and purposes of God that are illustrated in the word, and they can forecast it like that. Just that like the sorcerers could turn a stick into a snake like Moses did. Mm -hmm. They have an ability, but it's pulling from the dark realm, and they only have that ability for a time. And mm -hmm. so... And, and remember that the, the Bible says it's a counterfeit. It's not real, which is why you don't want to dabble in it because it is the, remember the original goal of Satan uh, was to be a God unto himself, was to take the throne from the creator, the one true God. Mm -hmm. So then he emulates because he wants to be God. He cannot create like God, but he can emulate. He can he can work in powers while he has his lease here on the earth and his little cohorts uh, with him have limited power. That is true. That is why the Lord tells us we have unlimited power in him to operate our authority over him. But if we partner with him, if we listen to those that are not a Christian by declaration and say things of the future or are speaking from witchcraft or the spiritual realm that is not the Holy Spirit, well, then we partner with that. And that's where prophecy can be a false prophet unto itself. And so now um, I've heard them. Now I've now my mind's heard them. Now it moves into my heart. Now I start speaking. Then what's going to happen? You're going to live out that plan, even though that is not God's plan for you. That's not God's plan revealed for you. That's not a word of knowledge from the Holy Spirit. That's not a word of wisdom from a gift of the Spirit. But that was clearly from Satan and the satanic mm -hmm. realm. So, so we're, I'll, I didn't I'll mean you, to deviate, yep. but no, that was good. a good question I mean, because the there, especially let me say today. Because this, this, let me say it this way. So uh, in the supernatural realm, there is no distance. And so when someone of the world let's say let's do let's go way back let's go high school a person not saved of the world has some demonic activity like many of unsaved people do right. uh, surrounding their life says something like i'm gonna ask so and so to the dance then the That's spiritual heard. realm has heard it and they can communicate it in a ouija board or whatever so and so is going to ask you to the dance it's not a word of wisdom. It's what this guy has said out loud. And because they were transmitting through the spiritual realm, they were able to say, hey, so-and-so is going to ask you to the dance. And so then when the person asked them to the dance, after their spirits, the sp not Holy Spirit, but the spirits are like, okay, you need to ask her. You need to ask her. You Because why? It, they all are following the Satan, who is the deceiver. Yeah. He wants you to be deceived. He wants you to think he has more power than he does. He wants you to be able to, to trust him for understanding for the future when it's really not how it works. Nope. So is good. that does that illustrate it better? Yeah, that's why we must guard our lips. 
It's why uh, mm-hmm. mysteries are to be uh, that's, sought out. That's, that's actually why, why, why some people say Jesus said to um, the disciples, there are many more things that I wish I could teach you, but you're not ready to hear it yet. Because if he would have uttered it, the spiritual realm would have heard it and maybe thwarted God's perfect plan of Jesus dying on the cross, raising from the dead. Because then he spent 40 days with them afterwards, teaching them, right. training them. After the, like, the oh, work now, was finished. Now the work's finished. Let me fill you in on the details. He's so amazing. That's why he could walk for for hours with those two on the road to Emmaus and, and they detail not even out. Know it <laughs> okay, now, now, let me tell you all the details from the Old Testament, all the prophecies that Jesus fulfilled, and he was able. He didn't do that to anybody beforehand. Why? Because it, it would have thwarted God's plan to to re- speak that out loud and thwart potentially God's perfect plan. In so, war yeah. games, it would have been like sending the enemy exactly what your tactic was. <laughs> Mm-hmm. All right. All right. We're side word of wisdom, what word of knowledge. Oh my go, word. All right. Go. So, gift of faith. Okay. Gift of faith. Gift of faith is a special faith for something supernatural. There's something beyond what would be capable in the natural realm. Not so, even our measure of faith. So not mm-hmm. Romans 12, 3. Right. Not the faith that we've each been dealt, but a different supernatural faith in a moment to accomplish heaven touching earth. Mm-hmm. Right, a supernatural gift of faith, and you can see that um, all all throughout the word. Actually, mm-hmm. where where where, but one place would be um, at the gate of beautiful. Uh, we don't have that stuff, but get up and walk. Okay, they didn't mm-hmm. even touch them. They didn't lay hands on them. They just started to speak in faith. This has already been done for you, and he gets up. That's mm-hmm. a that's a that's a gift of faith in that moment. There was no natural reason that should happen. Jesus had just left, taught them for a while. You know, they're just going into temple and here's this guy that's there all the time. But a gift of faith changed everything. I would say even it would be a gift of faith when the disciples come in. They're like, the temple tax guys are here. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And Jesus is like, don't worry about it. Go cast a net into the river and you'll pull out a fish with the coin that pays you my tax and yours. That would be a gift of faith because that's way beyond a natural phenomenon. I've been fishing many times. I've never caught a fish with money in its mouth ever. Like that's so crazy out of, out of the realm of natural that that would be a gift of faith. Hey, here's what we need to do exactly. So So faith imparted for a, a, a event or an action right in a moment that you wouldn't um, have yet just from your measure of faith. So a supernatural gift of faith. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next. Next gifts, gifts, plural Mm -hmm. of healing. I love this one. This one can be so misused. Yeah. Uh, Janelle says, can you repeat the definition of gift of faith? Gift of faith is a special a uh, supernatural amount of faith for something that is like an event uh, or very an action, unnatural, something way out of the realm of what could happen naturally mm-hmm. for a particular event or action. Yeah, it's an instant, like bam, you have it, and you're like super powered almost right. to go accomplish that right now. Okay, gifts so, of healing, gifts of healings, gifts of healings. It's really interesting. The word healings here is maybe more accurately, um. Cure. Trans, whatever translated as cured mm-hmm. so gifts of curings would be actually a more accurate way of saying to be i get cured. so excited about that because that just that just messes with everything right? that you understand that it's a process of being is the gift of healing it's the process of it even the word can be of of um of healing of being a doctor like a like physician the following for someone. yeah the, the on being under the care of a physician to not instantly be made well, but to walk to out walk your out cure. Your, whoa, I just hit my mic. Walk out your healing. Walk into your full manifestation of healing. So it's not always instantaneous. And so some people are like, all right, no, it's not gifts of healings because they would have just jumped out of that wheelchair. And but now they're they're slowly getting better. And even though that goes against what the doctors are saying, that's gifts of healings. Yeah. Because it will come. So mm-hmm. we have prayed for so 
so many people mm -hmm. that it wasn't right at the moment. And they'll maybe be like, oh, it's better. It's better. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, don't get me wrong. There's many people we've prayed for. It's instant, but they've caught the healing has come later. So when we've studied this out, the gifts of healing, that's not just a gift of healing. That's mm -hmm. the gifts of healing. So the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit's gifts of healing, that curing, that making better, or what the word refers to as wholeness, mm -hmm. right? That complete cure or wholeness so an example of this from jesus would be uh the 10 lepers that came to him and jesus said go show yourself to the priests and they were healed as they went it wasn't an instantaneous like bam and then they're all there like thank you jesus thank you Jesus. no it was as they went and then one the Samaritan turned around and went back to Jesus to say thank you. So evidently, it wasn't like I'm five steps away and also I'm like, oh, my word, I didn't realize I was healed. <laughs> it was instantaneous. I just didn't realize it. It was far enough that he had to turn around and be far enough that Jesus was like, where's the other, other nine? Mm -hmm. He can't see the other nine. They're that far away. And so... So anyway, and what I love is, is we're say, saying these and giving you instances, mm -hmm. you can see how Jesus operated in the gifts of the spirit. It was the central source of his ministry after receiving the Holy Spirit. So if we're supposed to emulate his walk, if we're supposed to walk as he walked in Paul, walk as Paul walked and Paul walked as Jesus walked, well, then. Why aren't we operating in these gifts of the spirit just as much as Jesus did? And remember that the Bible says that the accounts of which they've recorded of the things that he did, well, they couldn't record all of them. Even he accomplished in those three years, it would fill up the earth in books to contain it. So we only get a glimpse of little parts of his walk as he is utilizing the gifts of the spirit, the Holy Spirit, working the gifts of the spirit through him throughout his earthly walk. I just think it's so fun to see it actually when you when you're mm -hmm. learning what they are and then you can apply it to scripture where Jesus is walking in them. Now, working of miracles. Let's jump to that one because we're trying to accelerate. We should have done that. Like I 18 know part you guys, we have like so many, so many more. All right. <laughs> so working of miracles. That's the instantaneous one. So it, working of miracles would be instantaneous healings. It would be operations or powers that override natural laws. So Smith Wiggles were throwing a dead body up against a wall and then he comes to life. That would be a working of miracles. Having the gift of faith to do that motion is, or having the faith to do that motion, knowing to do that, that would be the gift of faith. Coming on like, okay, I need to take this dead body and throw it on the wall. Nobody thinks that. That was the gift of faith. They're like, okay, I know what to do. I'm doing it right now. Bam. And then working of miracles was that it actually, that body came back to life. Working of miracles is Jesus walking on water. That that overrides natural law. So we only, a lot of times we only define working of miracles as healings. But it's so much more than that. It's, it's overriding natural law is what gifts of um, working of miracles is so far we're going fast but we just want to check in now listen this is what i find every time we teach this your flesh is getting exhausted because it's teaching it's not itching information this is so important for you to get a hold of so that the holy spirit can make it reality in your life you must hold on and i tell you it's across the board whether we're teaching it or someone else it's like the flesh gets you know, like, oh, it's taking too long. It's too much information. Like, like receive this information, go past that carnal nature because I've seen it time and time again. And then it gets put on a shelf. And then that, that you don't see the workings of those gifts in your life because you weren't willing to study them out. And this isn't a judgment or anything. I'm telling you from experience, I've seen it happen time and time again. What's happening is their mind is getting uh, tired their body's getting tired of sitting there, but their spirit, if they pay attention, is coming alive right now. And they're like, yes, this is what I need. So because tomorrow we're going to talk about how to walk this out. How it's not just to both be just knowledge of something that somehow someday could go. Janelle says she's good for another hour. We're not going to take <laughs> another hour. We're going to make this. We're going to get this out. So, OK, we're going to miracles. Next is prophecy. Can I just jump in there? Uh, okay. yep. After a couple of these, in fact, almost, I think it's almost every other one and sometimes back to back, Paul is reinforcing that it's by the same spirit. 
over and over and over because he wants you to understand one is not higher than the other. One is not better than the other. One is not more preferred than the other. These workings of these gifts are by the same spirit. So he's reiterating it time and time again because he doesn't want our carnal nature to be like, oh, look what I operate in, right. right? He's like, no, when it's needed, you need to operate in it. It's all by the same spirit. So allow it to come. So I just wanted to throw that yep. in there, how insistent he is for us to understand that this is by the same spirit. Well, after he even lists all those in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11, he says, uh, but one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually, just as he wills. He gives you which one is needed for the moment. That's mm -hmm. going a because, window into what we're talking about tomorrow. Right. You would have no idea what to do in that moment. Well, he's going to give it to you. All right. Prophecy. What prophecy is simply saying what God is saying, communicating the heart of God. But the gift of prophecy is saying it in a moment needed, right? So mm -hmm. exactly what is needed in that moment for that person, for that situation, right? He, you know, if you go back and he says, everyone, I desire that everyone prophesies. That's not the gift of prophecy. I mm -hmm. desire that everyone prophesies. That's not being a prophet. Okay. You mm -hmm. want to prophesy, prophesy over your life. You want to speak the word of God over your life. You want to prophesy what the word of God is saying. This mm -hmm. for a moment is saying what God is saying over a certain situation in that moment. And uh, it's all it, the gift of prophecy is a group of people gathered together is when you see this. It's not on your own. <laughs> yeah. God does speak things to True. you, but that's not the gift of prophecy that it's talking about here. This is for, and there's a group of people. And someone says what God is saying. And it's always a word that builds up or um, encourages com or comfort. Yep. That's what this is for. And so an example of that would be Acts chapter 12, where, where the disciples, not the disciples. When I say disciples, you think like the disciple, 12 disciples of Jesus. The Christians were gathered together and were praying. And then... The Holy Spirit in that moment says, set apart Paul and Barnabas for the works of the ministry. And this is before they've gone on any missionary journeys, this is before anything really has happened. You see Paul getting saved, change his name from Saul to Paul, and then pretty much disappearing from that point in Acts until chapter 12. And then he still doesn't appear for, I think, until verse or chapter 14, then really begins to follow Paul. Because it goes back into, okay, now Peter was doing this and some other things. And so the, it was interesting, though, that it points out that the Spirit says this. And so they, it's what they do. They set him apart. They anoint him for ministry. And that was a word of gift prophecy. Of it was prophecy. a gift of prophecy. All right, discerning of spirits. So discerning of spirits is exactly like it sounds. Mm -hmm. Understanding what spirit or spirits are influencing a situation, a relationship, or a circumstance. It's being able to have a understanding of what's going on in the spiritual realm while we're still most likely seeing the natural realm. Right. So whether sometimes that's Sometimes people do that's... see with discerning of spirits, they see into the spiritual realm and can see the spirits and whatever. But a lot of times discerning of spirits, discerning just means an inward knowing or understanding. And so it's an understanding like, no, you know what? This isn't just sickness trying to come on my family. There's a spirit of infirmity here trying to mess with us and keep us from whatever event or yeah. whatever it is. And so then that's that understanding. Okay, now I know I'm not just praying for healing. I am praying and commanding this demonic presence out so that the healing can manifest. Yeah. It, it can be the same thing for, for different sins, for different whatever. And to even bad circumstances. Okay, what's the spirit operating right. here? And you get the uh, awareness. Right. Now, these gifts are not so that you can go, Holy Spirit, I need this gift right now. Mm -hmm. These are given to you as he wills, but he gives them in abundance. So and he's it's overly abundantly willing to give them to supply the one that's needed. Right. And so don't go looking for which one is which. I desire discerning of spirits because I like to pray for people and see them set free. 
And a lot of times I don't see them set free if I didn't discern what was really causing it. So my heart's desire when he says earnestly desire, you know, spiritual gifts is to be able to see what is truly oppressing someone. I would say Jesus, when he said, get behind me, Satan, to Peter, that was a discerning of the spirit. He knew he wasn't mm -hmm. talking from the wisdom of heaven or the wisdom of God. He knew he was talking from the realm of of. I don't want God's will accomplished. I want my will accomplished. And that would be uh, earthly or satanic. So he was talking mm -hmm. from that. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now we have um, speaking in tongues. Diverse tongues. Diverse tongues. tongues. Specifically what? the gift of diverse tongues. And it says diverse because guess what? Your tongues will not sound like my tongues. And that doesn't mean that yours is right or mine is right and the other person's is wrong. It's diverse tongues, just like God was able to communicate to help people develop however many languages there are in the world. And he doesn't have any trouble understanding them. He's so infinitely beyond us. He has the ability to create a new every language time. for every person. So much so that when they were filled with the Holy Spirit in the upper room, they each came out speaking a different language, representing every language that was there no, no. present that day. It does. It says no. that. They, they understood them in their own in tongue. tongues and every hearer heard all of them speaking in, in their, their own, own language. language. But you don't think individually they were? No, nope. they you were think all the Holy speaking Spirit just affected their ears. And their, yeah, everyone else's ability. That's a working that of out. miracles right there because it transcends the the overrides, the natural laws that they would hear everyone what they're saying. Or and instead they the were, diverse tongue coming out was each person's language which would be the reverse of the Tower of Babel. I don't think so. Anyway. I'm going to study it out. Okay. <laughs> you know I will. But I also see diverse tongues as when it's the gift of diverse tongues, it will sound nothing like the tongues you pray in on a daily basis and should be praying on a daily basis in the spirit. Okay. So diverse mm -hmm. tongues is, is when the gift comes on you, it's going to sound different than any other tongue you use mm -hmm. normally. And this is for, again, for the body. It's not for you on your own. That speak in tongues, like Paul says, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. He's not saying he's walking in. He wants everybody to walk into every church service and and give words of, in tongues. That's <laughs> Although not some what he's people saying. understand it is that doesn't go well for them. That's not what he's saying. And lastly is interpretation of tongues. Yep. So again, that's not translation. That's not word for word. You know, mm -hmm. that isn't like, wow, you know, they spoke in tongues like, you know, three minutes and then the translation was only 60 seconds. Well, well, that's because it's not a translation. It's an interpretation of what God was mm -hmm. saying. And so it will be said in the spiritual realm or by the tongue, mm -hmm. and then it will be interpreted in a, a language that can be understood by the hearers there. I had a uh, young, newly saved friend of mine in high school uh, used his tape recorder to record someone speaking in tongues and then the translation. And he was trying to figure out which word equated with which <laughs> it won't work. and it didn't work. And he's like, never it wasn't, it wasn't real. There's no way it didn't work. <laughs> and so we had to get, we actually had to go into this. It's not the translation of tongues. It's an interpretation of tongues and interpretation comes through that person's own ability to communicate. So for those of you that love words, what your interpretation of what God was communicating may even sound differently than my, if I were to interpret those tongues. But the fun part is when that happens on the inside, you feel the spirit come like on fire and he's like, yes, that's it. And so even though it's being said slightly different than you would say it, that's it how it comes across. It inside. confirms. Yep. Yeah. Now that was all designed to bring benefit to the body of Christ. The gifts of the spirit are for the children of God, the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And we are running so over. I think we should save the rest for tomorrow. Yeah, I think that's we'll good. go right yep. into what edify means. And then we'll hop over to first Corinthians 14. Yes. Yep. That's where we're going to pick up tomorrow. Yep. Before we get off, that was the, all of the gifts of the spirit by the working wait, wait. of the same spirit. No, it wasn't because we didn't get to, oh, I told yes. everyone there's, yes, there's not just nine. So check this out because these aren't referred to a lot. And to me, these are the gifts that identify the very working of the Holy spirit in us mm -hmm. um, because he is our helper. And so there are these gifts. I wrote so, it down for you. Oh, you did? Uh, Romans 12, 6, oh, yeah, right? I'm a, uh, yeah, so Romans 12, 6 says, since we have diffs that differ according to the grace given to us, and then there's that a bunch. That diffs that differ? Diffs. 
There's gifts. <laughs> gifts that And then differ. it starts off with, if prophecy according to the proportion of his faith. So we know right off the bat, it's not talking about natural gifts because prophecy is not a natural gift. Right. But it, then it goes into if service in his servant. And people think, okay, no, oh, that's, that's service. A, that's that's just a natural gift. thing. You know, you just, you're just good at helping. But no, service is and or can be there's a natural level and then there's a supernatural level of it just like i have a natural ability of faith to believe for things and then there's that supernatural level does that make sense i have a natural level of knowledge and there's the word of knowledge so he is in romans so 12 romans six. chapter 12 uh that's verse 7 if service and is serving he who teaches in his teaching or he who exhorts in his exhortation he who gives with generosity he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. All of those can be gifts. other than all of those can be gifts but when you do them by mm -hmm. the spirit. Yeah. Because they're, they're gifts of the spirit. I don't walk around completely brain dead until I have a word of knowledge. <laughs> or or, or on word of wisdom. or never have um, any knowledge or never have any wisdom until the gift moves. You see the difference. And so, I have knowledge. I have wisdom. But there is a gift of knowledge. There is a gift of wisdom. I serve, but there is a gift of serving. Right? There's a gift of generosity. There's a gift of leading. How but, cool is that? And so we can't overlook some of these other ones. And then the, the rest or not, I shouldn't say the rest. There's others we're not going to talk about. Uh, are at the end of First Corinthians chapter fourteen. Oops, did I click on the right one? Isn't it? Towards the end. Mm -hmm. He goes one through forty. I don't know. Oh my word! Now I can't find it. So there's other ones that talk about the gift of helps. The gift of encouragement. Those are, again, gifts. Yep. I and I know I people that operate that. We're we'll get behind. it for you but, and we'll have it by tomorrow. But um, are there any questions on the gifts? Because now, tomorrow, we're going to learn how to actually walk in them. How he says uh, to actually allow him to work them through us. The working of the gifts of the Spirit. Any questions? You can unmute yourself or raise your hand or um, or put it in the chat. Either way is good. I can't wait for tomorrow because this is so, <laughs> <laughs> so good. I'm so glad you're going into the others. Thank you. And yes, tomorrow is going to be awesome. But, you know, we got to set the foundation because, you know, if we don't set the foundation of the word of God, that's when people get flaky and they emulate the gifts of the spirit without it being the working of the gifts of the spirit by he who is the Holy Spirit. And mm -hmm. so I love that the Lord just kind of laid it out for us. Like, who is he? What are the gifts that work by him? And then how do we walk it out as a healthy church that is operating supernaturally? what it really looks like. And he's given us such a mighty plan. And that's where it goes into the overly abundant grace. <laughs> yeah. It's not just a limited, okay, I'm going to give you a slight amplification of your knowledge so that you'll right. do slightly better than those around you. Right. It's to be create such a dramatic difference in every single area that like it says in Acts that the, that the religious leaders had no other possible answer than to say, these guys have been with Jesus. Yeah. There's no other answer. I can't, I don't even know how to explain this. I don't even know how to handle this other than they had to have been with Jesus. That's, that's it. There's nothing else I can say about it. And that's how we're actually designed to live every single day of our life. Not just at church, just at big conferences or whatever, but God wants us to continually be that connected with the spirit that we always have his ability to bring supernatural influence in every situation, in every conversation, in every relationship. And that's what we're going to talk about tomorrow. When the Holy Spirit so, is just yes. waiting to be let out so he can bring heaven solution in every area for you and those around you. All yes. right. All right. Any other questions? We're cutting ourselves off. Comments? Questions. Comments. Glad but that we're again, finally ending 25 minutes Social media late. people, we will get back to you <laughs> as it pops up. And if you're still watching, because... It is still ridiculously, look at that, so. it's still...
It's bad. That's all right. Anyway. I had a bunch of people text me, so we're just going to upload the... Um... We're, it should be streaming 4K 30 frames per second. Instead, we have nothing. Yeah. So. Now, on those that joined on the site, were you able to hear us okay? That we're on Polly's the website? Polly's giving us a thumbs up. Okay. Okay, good. So, we have that recording. Okay, good. We'll, we'll take that one. Any other questions or comments before we pray? Oh, yes. Dave and Jacqueline. You can either type it or you can unmute. And mute. Oh, no. <laughs> you no. just did the, the <laughs> virtual hand raise. Been there, done that. Don't know how to take it down because then it does like two, three, four. No, that's the hallelujah. <laughs> okay, we're going to pray for you guys. And we'll see you tomorrow for the final Holy Spirit Reboot class. God, I thank you thank for you, your Father. supernatural ability to understand this and to walk this out. Lord, I ask that the, the knowledge and the understanding that you've planted into every heart would not be stolen. Yes. That it wouldn't be just information that comes in and stirred us up for a moment and then is stolen or, or, or choked out by the cares of this world, but it will produce a supernatural yield. Yes. A hundredfold from what they're walking in right now, yes. that they will begin yeah. to walk in a hundredfold of your supernatural gifts in their everyday life because now they know what to expect and how you've already designed them to connect with you and release you into their everyday life. Yes. Thank you, God. I ask you would continue to expand and, and unpack their understanding of your word and of these gifts so that they're able to not just apply them to their own life, yes. but become teachers of these to their families, to their to their uh, people in their small groups and in their friend groups, and even within their churches, that they would begin to exemplify this and then teach others how yes. to walk in this, because this yes. is a is for the body of Christ. So, Lord, I pray that you would use this to equip the body of Christ, even worldwide. Because of who you are through every person watching and how you need this message out. Yes. And Father, we pray for boldness. Boldness to surrender what they carnally reason. Boldness to step into what you're, where your Holy Spirit is leading. That they would just have that boldness, that recognition of the ability that has come by your Spirit, by the Holy Spirit in them, that allows and lets those gifts be worked through them in every situation as, the, as you lead them, Lord, by your Spirit, that they would understand that they don't have to wait wait, but they can earnestly desire to be used by you and that they will have the boldness in that time to step out, trust you and do it, to surrender and let you work your gifts by the Holy Spirit through them. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. His presence so, is so good. I want to encourage you. Where, don't share the video post that's out there right now <laughs> because it's atrocious. But I'm going to turn right around and get the uh, good copy uploading. And then I want to encourage each one of you to share it on your own page because this could be a way that God wants you or where it wants to begin working through you to equip those in your sphere of influence to, to develop yeah. Their ability to walk in the because remember this is the body the working spirit. together. Mm -hmm. So you don't just want to be the one moving by the gifts of the spirit. You want to be surrounded by those that are moving by the gifts of the spirit that make heaven known in every situation. So mm -hmm. thank you for joining us. We're gonna upload the good video, share it, and we will see you tomorrow night. And we look forward to it. Right. Bye everybody. Bye.